Should you guys be fertilizing cuttings before they've rooted? Let's find out. So I got a question this morning and I've been asked this question quite a bit so I thought I'd go ahead and answer it right now for you guys in video format. I printed it out for myself right here. I'll go ahead and read that question to you right now. It says, hi Mark. <laughs> a bit late to the comments here, but as a novice gardener who has just discovered your channel, I have a question. By using bark or sand to root the cuttings, would you not be depriving them of the nutrients that soil would give them? Or is that what the rooting hormone is for? I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation for it, but I'd love it if you could elaborate further. Thanks. Well, thanks for the question. I really appreciate it. I get the question a lot, like I said. Let's go ahead and answer it right now. And I'm gonna give you two quick answers. The first one is, no, you don't wanna fertilize your cuttings while they're sitting in the propagating frame before they've rooted. And the second answer is, no, the rooting hormone does not provide any nutrient value for the cuttings while they're sitting in the rooting frame. All the rooting hormone does is stimulate those little undifferentiated cells so that they'll form roots for the plant. All right, so there's a couple points I want to make here. And the first one is when you have a cutting sitting in the rooting medium, it has no roots to take up nutrients. And so to fertilize at that time before the, the, the roots have actually formed, you're just wasting fertilizer for one. And two, you're creating an environment that would welcome bacteria and fungus and other things that could cause disease and attack the plant. So let's talk about the first issue. The cutting hasn't actually formed roots yet. It can't uptake nutrients through the roots it doesn't have, and so it's not providing the plant with anything to add fertilizer first. And you'll notice this when you stick cutting. Sometimes, actually a lot of times, the leaves and the stems may actually start to turn a little bit yellow as it's trying to form roots. That little cutting will provide all of the nutrition that the plant needs in order to form roots right there. There's nothing you can do to help speed that up or to help make that happen a little bit better by adding nutrients to the soil. Once the plant has fully rooted, then you can add nutrients to the soil and then the plant will be able to take those nutrients up. So for the second point, when you add nutrients to the soil before those cuttings have actually rooted, you're, I believe you're actually opening up the chances for disease and rot. Whenever I have an inert material, a material that has no life in it, that's not active, that's not doing anything, it's just a, it's just a substrate to hold a cutting that our roots can grow into. That's all we want. We just want an inert material. And so as I've said before in other videos, and if you haven't seen that one about potting soil, I'll put a link up here, go click on it now. But um, I like to use fine fur bark, but it's fresh fine fur bark that hasn't rotted yet. It's inert. It drains well, but it holds a lot of moisture, but it's inert. Same with, um, you know, they're like sand. Sand is a good material for softwood cuttings. Some people like to use vermiculite. Some people like to use perlite. Some people like to use peat moss, but all of them are inert materials that are not alive. There's not tons of bacteria and fungus actively growing in that material. So we want an inert material. And when you add fertilizer, if you were gonna add fertilizer to that material before those cuttings have rooted, what you're doing is opening up the possibility for all those fungus and bacteria to grow. And you can notice this by, like sometimes with my little uh, fig cuttings in there, I've got the plastic cups and I put a cutting inside of it and once sometimes I'll fertilize too soon or too much and all of a sudden you'll start seeing green molds and things growing on the inside of the cup and that is because I supplied nutrition if there's no nutrition all of that stuff can't grow out of control and so you don't want to add fertilizer because you don't want to promote any kind of growth of all that kind of stuff any you know green algae growth or mold growth or or like bacteria or fungus you don't want to encourage any of that and by giving nitrogen or other nutrients to that inert material you encourage all that kind of growth you don't want that right now the biggest reason is because that that cutting is cut at the bottom and it's opened up to all kinds of infection getting in there. It doesn't have a closed system with roots and all that can protect itself. So in regard to the cutting being able to protect itself, it really can't do that good of a job 
protecting itself. It can, but once you cut that end open, it's opened up to all kinds of bacteria and fungus and molds and, you know, algae, things like that to get in there and attack it. Plants don't have an immune system like humans do. With plants, every single individual cell is built to fight off infection. The problem comes in when you cut that end and open up the plant to infection getting in. There's no mobilized immune cells like we have that are floating throughout that system looking for infection. That infection will go to one cell and here's my theory. When you stick a cutting, it has the nutrition that it has within that cutting. As it's trying to form roots, it's drawing from those individual cells nutrition to form those roots. As it's doing that, the nutrition is becoming depleted out of those cells. Sometimes you'll see yellow leaves and things like that. Now, you've got the cut end open. The plant hasn't fully formed roots yet. It's depleting its nutrition and all kinds of disease can get inside of there and start attacking the cells that are already depleted. That kind of sums it up in a nutshell. That's my theory on it. But what we do pretty well know is that in a plant, there's no mobilized immune cells going around kicking butt. It's individual cell, every individual cell for itself for the most part. And that's really gonna be tough on a cutting when each individual cell is already becoming depleted of nutrition, trying to form roots. Putting fertilizer in that medium, that inert medium, when you stick the cuttings isn't gonna help because it doesn't have roots to uptake the nutrients. So having said all that, you don't wanna fertilize the medium prior to the plants rooting. Now, once they have rooted, it's good to go ahead and fertilize. And I always, I'll show you out here in my rhododendron bed, I take a handful of my fertilizer, my slow release fertilizer, and I'll put a link up in the corner here if you haven't seen that video of exactly what I use. I've been getting questions about that a lot lately. And uh, I use this fertilizer, slow release, and I just sprinkle some on after the plants have fully rooted and then that supplies their nutrition. Now, you can use a liquid fertilizer, but you want to dilute it. You don't want to use anything real strong because these plants are young and new, and you don't want to harm them in any way by giving them too much fertilizer and burning the plants. The other thing you need to remember is you don't want to fertilize when you're in a dormant period, like right now in the middle of winter. You want to fertilize one of two time frames, either when you're in an active growing season, when you're in the middle of spring or summer and the plants are putting on growth, or when you're heading into a growing season, like really early spring when the buds are starting to break and things are starting to come out. So use slow release, heading into spring, use a more dilute liquid fertilizer or something that will give the nutrients more immediately during an active growing season. So this is a pretty big subject and there's a lot of information there, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to follow along. Spring is coming. We're going to have tons of awesome gardening videos. Till next time, I hope you guys have an awesome week and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.